Welcome back to The Watch. And we just watched Ant-Man Quantumania. <laughs> Apparently this is the 31st Marvel movie. Really? We've been through 31 of these now. It used to be an enjoyable experience. Oh, this one was not. Also, it's Ant-Man and the Wasp. But and I think wasp, yes. she's quite forgettable in this one. This was everything's forgettable in this one. Uh, Tyra, what's your thoughts on? I'm having difficulty expressing myself currently. Like I genuinely am kind of at a bit of a loss for words because it's been a while since I've really wanted to like watch a Marvel movie. It's a movie. Barely that. Mm. I felt nothing. Nothing from this film. All right, let's start with the good things. Is there? <laughs> okay, all so, right. So we're not. We're not all ears. We're not going to get into spoilers yet. We'll get into spoilers later. But just in a general sense, mm -hmm. I like Paul Rudd as Ant Man. Like he is a good actor. I like him as Ant Man. It's funny. It's mm -hmm. he is an entertaining person. The actor who plays Kang. I was going to mention. I I like him. I think I like him as an actor, and there were some emotional deliveries where he, I think he, he, he brings it, but I feel nothing from it because the thing he's talking about, I have no point of reference or care to or regard or interest in, mm. and that's the fundamental failing for this film for me. But sorry, continue. Was it just you or did it feel like, was it just me or did it feel like every time Kang, the actor who played mm. Kang, delivered a line, it was about, like he was about to cry. I felt like every time he delivered a line, he was like holding back tears. I'm not saying he's a bad actor. Just the just... scars of the line no, that, like no. that make it look like he's always crying. It, it just felt like every line was like backed up by like I'm I'm fighting back tears. That's all. That's what I saw. <laughs> but I liked him as an actor, and I thought he did a good job. Yeah, I think this movie was an absolute mess. There were so many throwaway characters and things that happened, and like this is. Uh, movie one of phase five. I'm expecting more setup here <laughs> and everything that they phase, set up. Phase two of the Infinity Saga, though. Remember? It's, oh, it's, don't it's, listen to <laughs> Kevin Feige because he doesn't know what he's doing, clearly. But, yeah, everything in this... Oh, just so many things. There, like, a spoiler stuff I can't mention We'll get into I'm spoilers. Like... First, non-spoilers. But on a technical level, the plot of this film is absolute dog crap. It's mm. nonsense. And you could almost call this film, instead of Ant-Man and the Wasp, you could call it Ant Ex Machina. Do you, yeah. do you, do you, do you get where I'm going with that one, guys? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll get to the specifics about that. The, the <laughs> plot is so dumb. But even if you were to strip away that, right, there are movies with nonsensical plots that at least you feel something mm. and get some measure of enjoyment out of. And like, for instance, the plot of uh, Black Adam was pretty dumb. At least there were moments that were just like, hey, that was kind of cool. Well, you know, yeah, yeah like, this one didn't have much. Nothing. I, I felt nothing. I got no, I, eh. And one of the things that I feel undermines any investment you have in it is that ultimately you don't care about the underlying conflict. The, there is a battle, and this isn't spoilers, it's in the... Um, in the trailers, there's a, a battle against Kang, clearly, and it's in the quantum realm, and they establish nothing to make you give a friggin' crap about, oh, we've got to save the quantum realm, who cares? I think that that is more like the people who are going to watch this movie are interested in that, so they will care about it. Really? Mm, like, but I don't think... I think this is a bit on us. We all yeah. don't care enough. But I think also in terms of the movie, they don't do very well at setting up why mm. I should care. Was there right. a single individual from the quantum realm as a character that you cared about in this film? That, that you thought gave something to be invested in? Exactly, that's my point. Because if you want to be invested in the plight of this, you know, universe, the way that you do it narratively is by grounding it. Actually, man, I like I like Bill I like Bill Murray's character. He was good. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, oh he was God. good. He was. Is it just because you like Bill Murray? Yeah, was, maybe. Yeah, he just played was, himself. Yeah. Barely that. He wasn't funny. He was just like I'm it depends, Bill Murray and I'm talking. He just sort of new Ferrari. <laughs> Marvel's like, all right, have a couple of million. Here you go. I don't know. I felt like he was like, I'm going to choose violence in every situation that we're talking about here. And I like that. It was funny. Um, but yeah, like usually, we're, well, actually, let me, let me start again, right? So 
when you have a story with massive stakes, it is hard for me and just people in general to kind of comprehend the plight of trillions of people. And this isn't even trillions. They are trying to say it's the plight of universes and timelines, a scale so unfathomable, it's beyond comprehension. And so how can you then get the audience actually invested in oh, what's actually going on? Mm. And the way that you usually do this with narrative is by grounding it with something that they can relate to and connect with. For instance, the plight of the world is at stake, but then they focus in on a character you might know that's amongst the crowd of the lives are at stake. Mm. Okay, Or you, you connect it somehow to make you invested. And there was none of that. All the characters from this world are jokes. Mm. Like... like yeah, falling jo- Also, I didn't find this movie funny at all. Yeah, I didn't laugh. A Neither thing. did the cinema. <laughs> yeah, did you do it? Like, when the credits finished, it was so quiet. <laughs> To be, to be like fair, to be fair, drop. there was only like seven people in the cinema. Yeah, but at so. the same time, usually there's at least a group of friends who are like, oh, we're no, 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 talking. No one said anything after this movie. Everyone just walked out. <laughs> Kevin Feige wants to be so proud of himself right now. Produced by Kevin Feige in big letters in the credits. So there was also the, there was the issue of writing, which he's a mention. Mm. The VFX in this <laughs> was no 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 hold on but. hold on. <laughs> No spoilers yet. We're not going to talk about Egghead. I, I want drunk. to talk about I'm before drunk. that. Before we get to the the big, big elephant in the room. <laughs> even before that, the VFX was not good. Like yeah. this isn't spoilers. Like the ships and the bikes and stuff. It was yeah. Even the way they, they stood on things and moved around, like it, the VFX this was, was rushed. And this whole film was basically filmed on their volume thing. Yeah, it's, it's all VFX. The entire thing. Basically, and for most movies, you can't really notice it, but because of the aesthetic of this world, how it's supposed to be like organisms and cells and stuff, and that's really hard to like animate. Which it I, just looks terrible. And it's also wrong for the scale that this world's supposed oh, to be yeah. in. It's so, like don't nothing even, makes sense. Don't in even this get me started on that. Like <laughs> I, you are shrinking smaller than. Uh, oxygen than atoms. Mo- yeah, than yeah. oxygen molecules, than, than smaller than anything, and it's like, just take my helmet off, everything's cool. Like, it, yeah, there's so many, and it's so it's so damn confusing. Questions. Exactly, like, is this universe all contained within the like a section of a section of a fraction of a minuscule part of an of a quark? And a quark is the things in protons. That like, mm. I, it's it's insanely smaller than an atom. Does that mean they're like universes of this insane size in every time? Like, it, and it's in the basement as well. Yeah, it's inside their basement. And it, so what if they were in like the street or something? Yeah. Does that mean they go to a different universe? And or, they don't they don't they don't explain not. it. I, they don't explain it. That I, if I was to do the job of the writers for them. Mm. The way I'd explain it is that you get so small, you actually burst out of the bonds of your own reality and enter a new reality that is disconnected in size and space to this one I completely. I think they tried to say that, that it was underneath the quantum realm. Like, that's that's what they said. They Sorry. said the universe was, like, underneath it, mm. which... I don't know how, mm. like what? But, but the way that you would explain it then is that by going so insanely small, wherever you are is basically the portal to the same universe. Yeah. There's no like spatial link where, um, if because like, because what it seems to be implying, and this is why it gets confusing, is that is this just the universe in like inside one atom? Is there, are this universe is in every single atom because you're stringing the... I think you're right. I think mm. it's that's what they tried to explain, but they it's, didn't. They didn't though. No, I th- no, no. When they said like, you you go under the qua- like they go under the quantum realm into another universe into a small universe. That's how they said it in the movie, mm-hmm. but it's still very it's like and confusing. And also, nothing makes sense in this universe. They play just when I say fast and loose, they don't give a crap about the consistent rules of this universe mm. to the point where there is just. A uh, complete story breaking Deus Ex Muck and a bullcrap contrivance that the entire film is resting on, and it's because oh, it does this or that whenever we friggin' want it. Uh, and the like, this realm seems like a universe of endless resources because holy crap, the stuff that people build in this universe is like, and yeah. the energy that's available, it's like, and it's gross. It's also, yeah, it's just ugly. It's gross. I, yeah, I'll try not to spoil it, but it's really weird when the, the bad guys have all the cool ships and the good guys have all these, like, sausage ships. <laughs> and then you jump and, out of the pocket in the ship? Yeah, like, you want me to, like, barrack for them? At least let them look cool. These ones just look gross. Yeah, it's... it's, And so there are layers of things that just either confuse you, make you uninvested, not care, 
throw you out. And when I say throw you out, like the VFX thing is like it's bad. It's, it's there's, <laughs> there's a, there is a an elephant or or a head in the room that uh, yeah, what what? I feel like we have to explain it for because this is the non spoiler bit. So we'll just yeah. explain a little bit. First off, they're trying to emulate like organisms and life forms, things that are translucent, that sort of thing, mm -hmm. which is really hard to capture in the real world. Mm -hmm. So when you try and do it in VFX, it just looks not good. Mm -hmm. It just looks not good yeah. and gross. And there's no explanation of what's like again, no rules at all. There's, there's just random, weird, alien-looking life forms that almost non-consistent. It's just random. Everything you've seen, there's not like oh, I recognise that. It's just random crap again and again and again. To the point where you're like, what is this? What is this? You know, like, it's dumb. It's dumb, and you don't yeah. care. There's just little things like apparently buildings are sentient in this world but then they're not like it's just <laughs> sentient for that one joke and the people go inside the buildings let's be clear about this they go inside of those buildings mm -hmm. and jump out of those buildings yeah. and and people are really confused that someone has holes when there's humans <laughs> that have else holes, has holes everywhere else. else it's like there's no consistency here it's dumb it's stupid and as a result you don't give a freaking crap about what's going on because it can either be con uh, subverted or it doesn't matter what anyone does because it's a deus ex machina save at the end. I, I, the characters could just have sit on their ass the whole time and they still the end result would have still happened as it did, basically. And the, the, oh, the contradictions to try and justify it as well is insane. And so this is a profoundly stupid and useless film. Well said. Uh, so I'm like... Ugh. Par for the course with um, Disney Marvel, like one out of ten territory, if that. It's it's. Pointless. I wouldn't put it that low. Mm. So I look at it in terms of I when when we do these reviews, I always mm. have to make sure that I look at it in terms of the normie, like just the average movie yeah. or how they look. I was right about Avatar. I said <laughs> I said normies are gonna love that yeah. stuff, and they did. Oh, I don't think normies. Two will billion like this. of them yeah. loved it. Like I think normies would not into this nearly as much. I think for it's the people, boring. I think for the people who love Marvel, they will like this too. Really, gosh. I think there's only one thing that even they won't be able to defend, mm -hmm. which is um, egg on your face <laughs> type deal. Um, I'd give it maybe me personally. I'd give it a four or five, and then mm. for a normie sort of you, a see, seven. Two or three, I reckon for normie. Uh, but what, do, what no. are your? I was gonna do I, three because okay. uh, it's. Not no, sorry, as bad no. as Wakanda Forever. That was I, uh, three hours of just... <sighs> like, it's the best one we've ever seen in the past couple of years. Just because it isn't as atrocious. Like, I think it's very equivalent to Wakanda Forever, but people have such less interest in Ant-Man that it's worse See, in that regard. I, I had less reactions to this, therefore mm. I find it more enjoyable to watch because <laughs> I wasn't mad at them calling me a colonizer every two seconds. I think if you turn your brain off, like normies do when they watch movies, there's enough meat here, there's enough flashy lights, there's enough color, there's enough mm. linking mm. to everything else and upcoming things that people will like it. Oh, Relati wow. Relatively See, I, I get the feeling that even the normies are starting to get sick of Marvel. I, I, I've, oh, yeah. I've heard more normies like check out from She-Hulk than and, yeah, and other Marvel yeah. shows than ever before, mm. and uh, progressively Marvel uh, has been getting worse views. Like look at the results of Thor: Love and Thunder, it bombed, and I reckon, right. and this like ha does not have the character power as Thor does at all. And uh, is it arguably a worse? F I think it would. Be, I think it's even worse than Thor, honestly. Oh no. It's, mm. Look, I'm trying to judge between the quality of different <laughs> turds no, 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 no. here, exactly. and so it's that. very difficult. <laughs> They're both broken. <laughs> they both suck. It's like, oh, I want to throw up. <laughs> different, different parts of the throat. Uh, I throw uh, up. <laughs> yeah, no, I wouldn't put it on. Th Thor was not good. Uh, yeah, I think normies will like it. All right. Because well, if, if you if you turn your brain off and you're not trying to analyze it critically. And you Such like a, Marvel? I, I think there's isn't enough. that a sad thing I, that, that not, Marvel is just relying on people to be stupid so they don't see how 
dog crap their their um, yeah. stories are. I'm not and saying that's never, good. Know, I'm just saying that's. But it never used to be the case. They were capable yeah. of making good things once upon a time. So that's our non-spoiler section done. But there's a lot to break down in this film, and I mean a, a lot because it's actually broken. And I get the feeling once we break it down, people might realize how flawed this film is. Yes, it is quite flawed. Unlike this segue to our sponsor. Surfshark, home to all your VPN needs. Surfshark keeps your identity safe by encrypting all the information sent between your devices and the internet. I don't know about you, but I'd rather go surfing with a shark than swimming with the fishes. This keeps your personal data protected from Silicon Valley and the CCP. As a VPN, it allows you to swap the real location of your device with a new one by changing your IP address. This way you can virtually travel to any country around the globe. How do I get, how do I get down from here? Access and unlock region specific content using Surfshark VPN. If you want to watch some fire anime, simply swap your region to Japan and use the Japan Netflix. Masking your IP address is essential to becoming private online. A VPN makes sure that your city, country, and most importantly, download history aren't linked to your identity. We know what you get up to on the internet. Using the code Night's Watch to get 83% off plus three months extra for free. That's right, three months for free. Surfshark offers a 30 day money back guarantee so there's no risk in trying it out. Give it a go, you might like it. The link is in the description below. Help support the channel and thank you Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Now, back to the review. So, uh, genuinely, VPNs, very worthwhile, okay? I absolutely use one and this is a great deal if you haven't tried a, a VPN yet. Good deal to get you started. You get all those benefits and thank you. Um, thank you, Sir. 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 Thank you, Sir. Thank you, Sir. All right, spoilers now. You've been warned. Okay, okay. So let's address the head in the room. The, oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, whoa. <laughs> so how, I want to I set the scene for everybody watching. We were all sitting in the cinema, you know, having our popcorn, having a drink, lights dark, we're watching it. Modoc comes on and he looks cool. He he's looks got, cool. Like he's got his that, mask. He's got his mask on. And the mask looks more like the comic book Modoc. Menacing. Looks Gold, cool. glistening, scary. Got a nice cool voice changer too, where he's all like, ah, snap. <laughs> Then he uh, takes off the mask. And like just <laughs> to reveal the face underneath. And what could be described as an audible laugh from a lot of people in this <laughs> laugh slash groan words could not describe how cheap and just awful it looked for all those people who like got angry when we were talking about it and angry at other people calling them out for how terrible it looks and like oh no in the finished movie you'll look better <laughs> it doesn't it looks worse it, yeah it looks worse it looks worse because it stays it keeps the shot <laughs> on the face and it is like imagine my face Photoshop stretched into a box, okay, with really bad kind of tracking. And yeah. so even when it turns on the side, it looks like it's flat. Mm. It's, it's been like pasted on. It looks ridiculous. So dumb. Like, to the point you laugh. Yes. It's, you laugh out loud. It's funny. And because it's the actor's face. They, they didn't try and make uh -huh. him look like he had, you know, mutated or, or, or changed or what. It's just his clean face mm. stretched over the Modoc thing. Mm. And like, I, I'm baffled because I think of like, you know, anime, I, not lots of animatronic kind of faces. Uh, have you ever, any of you guys see the face of Bo or Poe yeah, in, yes. in Doctor Who? Yeah. It looked a thousand times better, and that was when Doctor Who had a, still a low budget. 2007, 8, something like, like that. Like, that was ages they ago. They couldn't have even done something like that, and it would have looked a thousand times like, This was unbelievably cheap, and it looked so dog crap. Like, this is such dog crap VFX that it's like, you know, some untrained person learning at uni tries to do something for a indie project bad. I and, and indie projects can look way better as well. The issue is, okay, they could do one reveal where it's like, okay, it looks like I'm on the mask, and then just put the mask on for us the movie. They purposely took it off, made you look at him, and he was a joke for the movie as well. Like, not only were the graphics mm -hmm. questionable, it was also his character had Never completely changed. Never menacing at all. Well, not not a single moment did I think, oh, Modoc. Like, it, and he, he, he was a clown. It was he, having he, a clown. He even got the little baby legs, like Deadpool. Yeah. He yeah. got that scene when he was putting the suit on. It he is... had a little little butt as well. Yeah, and yeah. they put the suit on. So I was like, really, you put that in? It it looks like 
uh, deep fake that you get on your mobile phone. <laughs> really big, though. That's what that face looks like. And his arc as well was basically, oh, don't be a dick. <laughs> That's it. That's it. That was... Uh, and, uh, like, the quality of Marvel writing, everyone, sometimes you don't always have to be. And and that's I mean, that's that's my, the writing quality. I, my favorite bit was you know ants are right maybe socialism hey you know, it's oh, things it, away. Well, I was politics. coming to that. I was coming to that. Disney Marvel they can't resist themselves. They can't resist they can't themselves. Resist, uh, yeah. like they just they, ha they, they they have to do it. And we're at the point where I'm like good. Keep going, Disney. And so part of me is, is maniacally happy that like they're not learning. This is just the continual destruction of their own house around them. And uh, forcing in crap like that, let, maybe we'll revisit it when we talk about the ants, because the ants are right. the... Um, I think I think or, we should start laying out yeah, like, let, the story. Okay. Like how, well, so how that, it I think that leads into the opening, because the opening, we're getting all of everyone's like story, basically. And so Scott's doing his own thing. Like the background. Hope background. has cut her hair. She's running the business. She's helping homelessness, energy crisis, doing all these great she's things. She's an activist. Yeah, she's you know, great. She was arrested from a, um, a peaceful protest. That was the daughter. Yeah, they were talking, he's talking oh, about her oh, daughter. Sorry, yeah, I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting confused. There's Hope is his Hope. girlfriend. Sorry, the daughter's sword is the activist, but the, the, yes. the, 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 I, want, I want to defend this. I want to defend this because she is in charge of the giant company. Yeah. And if you have the resources to do all those phil uh, philanthropic things, phil philanthropic? Philanthropic? Philanthropic endeavors. <laughs> go for it. I yeah. have no problem with that. I would be okay with it if it wasn't, because there's a part in the car where she's with the daughter that just picked up from prison, and they're basically all just laying it on Scott, being, Scott, you're an awful father. You're yeah. just a jerk. What, like, what good she's are you doing? doing stuff. Exactly. exactly. You saved the world from Endgame. Great, Dad. Yeah. You wrote a book. Fantastic. I went to a uh, protest and got arrested. Unless you're an... You know, trying to change the world in everything that you do, you're protesting everything like that, you're a useless human being, like Scott, basically, yeah. is, is, is what The start of the film is hate on Scott Lang. Because he's useless and yeah. doing nothing. And, and he wrote a book, and isn't that funny? <laughs> and so it's a joke. I get it just, you know, there was something perhaps there at the beginning where, you know, he was trying to make a better life for himself, be there for his daughter and stuff like that. And now they just, you know. Useless. I disagree with that. Like he wasn't, I don't, I, I don't see him as a joke. I saw it more as he was being reasonable in the fact that he's already saved the world. And he's like, okay, I want to just live my life now. Mm. And everybody's around but, him like, no, no, you got to keep going. He's like, no, no, no. He I actually never said that. He said like, you know, oh, you know, if anything's in trouble, if the Avengers call me, I'll be yeah, there. Yeah, but yeah. like since Endgame or whatever, yeah. he's basically just been trying to live a life. And they're just like, no, no, you got to go out and do this. No, you got to go mm. out and save the little guy. And he's like, I just want to live my life, guys. You know, oh, I was stuck in there for like five years. I want to just live my life. And can I just say, skipping to the end, he just goes back to that same life. Yeah. Like throw the whole mm. like again. This is what is issue with the story. They open up with this yeah. is the problem with they, Scott, and at the end he's still in that same situation. Throw the whole two hours, nothing but, happened. But the like, good thing is they all realize that no, no, he's not the problem. Yeah, they were the problem. <laughs> Sometimes it's okay to just relax. Well, no, no. The, the, like this is actually a problem with the film. There are two characters in the film um, that become aware of reality shattering threats mm. that they decide. Ah, I don't need him to warn anyone. It'll be fine. And it breaks my brain. I'm like, you friggin' moron. And the, what, what frustrates me even more about that, they even tease about it at the end of the film where they even have Scott go, oh, maybe maybe something really bad is happening. And yeah, yeah any brain-dead moron would clue onto the fact that this guy dropped so many uh, bits of information of how much of a threat um, is in this multiverse thing. And so he actually thinks about it, verbalizes because they project his thoughts, and then is literally brushes it off like, yeah. you friggin' moron, I wanted to slap him. I disagree. With, I don't agree with that. Because what's he going to do? It's not like Tell he, the Avengers? Tell, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, but I mean, like, what's but the... But he doesn't even do that! <laughs> what's he going to do, though? He can't travel through time. He can't go and find all the Kangs. He can't beat well, them actually, all. Well, the, actually, the people who have access to knowing how to do multiversal travel and time travel is... Pin people and and the, like because they, they, can they, do... they can access the quantum realm and that's how you can access because yeah, that's, that's how they travel in time yeah. in the game. 
Right. Yeah. I yeah. About that. Like they're the ones who are most equipped to actually right. explore and I mean, countermeasures. You oh, defeated it's... Kang once before. You can at least prep for when he does return. I but w- instead he's like, nah. I withdraw my objection. <laughs> That's why I forgot about that. <laughs> but not only that, the mum has oh, known yeah. oh. that there's this horrible, dangerous threat. There's a guy who can break reality that, annoys that is trying to break free out of the quantum realm and she didn't tell anyone. Because it was, um, she wanted to forget about that time in her life. You know, reality might get destroyed if this guy gets free. And and she she even gets on a pedestal that you destroyed entire realities and I didn't do anything to try and prevent your potential return when I was free and you were trapped. But don't give me this that you cared about these people. You, you just were happy to forget about it. It's just... <laughs> Also, I want to know if I've forgotten this or not. When they found her, was she in a pod when she was in the quantum realm originally? I don't think so. Uh, she was just walking around the, and, and, and it looked thing. a lot different. And they they have like um, the other you know the other guy say it doesn't it didn't look like this. Yeah. But then they brush that aside. It looks nothing like yeah. when they entered the quantum realm. It was like you know. Weird. I don't think they're in the quantum realm though. I think There's they're in the. Yeah, they're she in said the you need yeah. to go deeper. Yeah. But then how did she find? The husband, if she was in a deeper pocket of the... I don't know. Exactly. Great questions. <laughs> Great questions. Not, they, don't, they don't They, they don't, don't connect. Yeah, they don't care about. So the mother has been to the, the universe where Kang is. She's <laughs> been where Kang is for like 30 years. She escapes. Uh, she comes back to reality, back to her family, and doesn't tell them anything. Yeah. They then send a signal down. Well, the daughter is intrigued about the quantum realm mm. and she's a genius because like, there was no build-up of her being smart, learning. You don't have to build it up when they've been gone for five years. It she happened just, she just said, I was reading it and now, I, now she is so smart that she can build a device that can monitor the quantum realm. This is like a technology that is Tony Stark level. Um, and what is it? Hank? No, Hank. Hank. Is it Pim? Yeah. Hank, is it Hank Pym? But it, like, it was like, well, he was impressed. And she just whipped it out of her ass. I did, I made this because... I mean, if you saw Black Panther, they can just make Iron Man suits now because they're <laughs> smart young women. Back in the day, it took an entire episode for Tony Stark to develop a new, like, thing uh, to power his arc reactor. I miss, now they, I miss, I miss when... I miss Iron Man so much. Things had to be given investment to develop. It took a whole movie to not poison himself. (laughs) And now they're like, I just built this off screen before the movie started. Basically, Kang finds this uh, message they sent down. Technically, it was MODOK. Kang, MODOK. Yeah, same, 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 same. Also, just little dumb things too, which is like, yeah, uh, it's like a satellite. We're sending, receiving messages. He goes, you're sending? You're sending things? Like, Did you not hear uh, satellite? Did you not beacon? Yes, we send messages to the quantum realm. And she's like, oh, okay. It's not until they spill it out for her. She's actually like, oh, wait, stop doing yeah, it. Shut it down now. And I'm like, if it was that dangerous, like, even if you didn't want to give details, which is dumb, you would. Like, there's a guy named Kang who wants to destroy reality and is trapped in the quantum realm. It was that quick. That, uh, like, what? it's not hard. Because <laughs> she portrays, the mother portrays what happened in the quantum realm as like, you know, it, it was so hard for me. It was so suffering. I just don't want to talk about that hard time of my life. When in reality, it's like, no, no, no. There was like a multiversal level threat down there enslaving everybody. I had to leave. So like if you had just said, like framed it a little bit differently, don't mess with what's down there, mm. all could have been avoided. Yeah. Yeah. All could have been avoided. And she didn't even... <laughs> what really annoys me is when they get... All right, so Kang, Modok finds them. They get sucked into the device, go down into the universe beneath. Get separated, but there, there was a, a thing that they just threw in there, which was actually the um, setup for the most bullcrap in the yeah, film. Yeah, yeah, the ants. Yeah. The ants. Um, before they get sucked in, we see a panel of uh, Hank's. Is, is it like yeah, ant his farm, ants? His ant so, farm. Sorry, there's Hank and Paul Rudd. He plays Scott. Scott. Okay, so Hank and Scott. Okay, so yeah, Hank. He's got ants there, and suddenly, because reasons. They're developing their own technology. They're just genius ants. And I was just like, what? what? Hey, what? Hey. He's like, ants are real smart, aren't they? They're just, ants are real <laughs> smart. It's like, again, they, this is world-changing, shattering kind of concepts and technology and ideas. And it's like, oh, they're just there. We know why they're there. So you can whip out this bullcrap Deus Ex Machina 
thing at the end. But it's just like, come off it. What arbitrary crap is this? Like, he's a scientist. He loves ants. I'm sure he want to tell everyone in the world, look at my ants. Like, ants smart enough to develop technology. You see flashing lights in this ant farm. This is not a joke, by the way. This They're not joking with you. That actually is what happens. <laughs> yeah. And... and, and when they get sucked into the quantum thingy, mm. the ant farm gets sucked in as well. Yes. This is important. This is important. That's good you mentioned that. <laughs> they basically all crash land in the quantum realm, mm-hmm. and they're being searched for. Suddenly, yeah. Yeah, uh, they're being searched for uh, by a ship sh- above. And and they get separated. Mm. So Scott and his daughter are uh, uh, off by themselves. Off by himself, and then... Um, uh, Hank, Hank and um, Hope, Hope and... I don't know the wife's name. I wrote it down, but it's the, it's the mum. Mrs. Hank, yeah. <laughs> uh, they are all together, so they're in mm-hmm. separate groups. And somehow, uh, Modoc can magically find one group, but the other group they can't find. It's just like, well, he does later on. A bit later, but like, one group actually is you know they travel to a city essentially, and I mm-hmm. could have oh maybe someone tips it off. Like, yeah. It'd make more sense that they're found, but no, Modoc magically finds the people that get taken to a hidden rebel Man, group. Man, you're just looking too much into it. Just chill, no, roll with it. Basic storytelling. It's just found because of reason. And then, then the leader has the gall to say, you led them to us. You kidnapped them and brought them to your camp. It was your own people that led them to you, moron. And then it, as well, how could they lead them to them if they didn't know where they were in the first place to know whether they'd just follow them to the camp? It's just stupid. The, he's talking about Scott and his daughter. The yeah. people kidnapped him. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's fair. And they drink some juice. Oh, yeah. And they make know. a whole funny before, thing out of before it. Before we get to that, I oh, okay. really, because it's, it, it annoys me so much. Mm. The mother, mm-hmm. you can tell she's terrified. She has like PTSD. You can, t- you can see it. And she's freaking out. She's like, we've got to get out of here. We shouldn't be here. But she's going on and on. But she won't tell them what's going on at all. <laughs> Just every, mention why. <laughs> every time they ask, what's going on? What, what's happening? She's like, we'll talk about it later. We'll talk about Which it later. She's like, shh, be quiet. Yeah. Anyways, guys, guys shh, be quiet. And then they keep talking. It anno- <laughs> like, she tells them to shut up, and they keep talking. It, non sequiturs. It annoys me, because it, it drags on for so long, to the point where they're, like, in the ship. Yeah. And then just, like, they have a little powwow. And then she tells them. Yeah. And, it, and it's not An like it was dump. hard. Yeah, it wasn't hard at all. It's like... <laughs> And, I, info and this is the story that she didn't tell them when she returned from the quantum realm the first time. Mm-hmm. What led to this entire situation? It's like... So dumb. It annoyed me. It, 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 it's... Continue on with their juices, Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of juices in a lot of stuff we're reviewing these days. Yeah, well, they get captured and then his daughter, Scott's daughter, is like, hey, Dad, drink the juice. And she's got like this weird blood thing down and you're like, okay, this is trying to make me feel uncomfortable. And then eventually there's like... Speaking of arbitrary bullcrap thing that they only put in to just get convenience or things happen in the plot to make it, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can drink this juice and then understand everyone. And magical uh, communication juice that comes from a uh, jelly person. And if you drink his jelly, I don't you know suddenly about that. can communicate. Because remember at the bar scene, yeah. they also had the juice. Yeah. But mm. where did they get that juice from? I don't from? know. The same, the same, that, that same little dude? Probably harvest them or something. No. <laughs> tough. I don't know. They have them all they trapped little... and they just get milked. <laughs> they have like little squids they eat. Yeah. And it's very uncomfortable. I mean, look, even the universal translator is pushing the line of convenience. Mm. But okay, maybe. We could maybe accept it. Super advanced technology. Maybe, maybe. But, but why would it be a liquid? Magical juice. Yeah, why would that, it be a that juice? When you, it, it's magic. They're like You just drink it and you can communicate because reasons. Yeah. So dumb. Also, there's a guy who can read minds and just reads their minds and he goes, yeah, they're not lying. Yeah, and you it's know, true. I, like, you know what would be more believable? I found him funny. Uh, well, the, the line how is like everybody's just so disgusting <laughs> yeah, like, I'm like yeah, yeah that's realistic yeah <laughs> I didn't hate him but also I was like he was there for that moment and then that was it for the movie like he can read minds mm. but you know what you could have done with that character if to because the problem in this in the narrative is that they're in another universe it would make sense that they're all speaking English how can we get them to communicate well communication actually happens if you look at like the more subconscious thing the words you say are um are like they they're constructs okay mm. the the concepts are what's important and you could communicate through what if he just does a telepathy thing yeah. and is like 
rewrites the the language structure of your brain. So now they like, and that makes actual kind of thematic sense based on the power and everything. You could just do that, but instead, because they're not creative, they can't think of things like consistent logically. They just add ah, juice. Drink the juice. Drink the juice. Or you could just have like a little hearing aid that does the translation for you. And why do they make mm. it a ritual? Like, I don't know, Shad. They're, it just... they're, they're, they're all in a circle chanting, do, drink, and we get the translation. It's drink the juice, drink the. And it's like, uh, what, they made it a ritual. I don't know. Do they do this regularly? And also, you're in the quantum realm, right? Do they have like such different languages that they require a juice for everyone to drink? I, and then why I, different juices make you speak different languages? Why didn't everyone just drink one juice? I know, it seems like running into people who don't speak the language of your universe would be a rarity, and that people from other universes, and so, like, nothing makes sense. So many questions. Uh, we don't have to go... Uh, we will, well, we will. We're, no, 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 we don't even have to mention juice one more time <laughs> in this episode, okay? I think that's enough of the word juice for one day. I mean, the guy goes on, who tries to be funny with the holes, he's like, why do you have so many holes? How many holes do you have? And then the guy with holes is like, he's got seven. The guy with the guy who makes the juice. Who also talking. has yeah. holes and looks completely human. Mm. And so this, mm, it's yeah. dumb. Then we get introduced to Bill Murray's character. Yeah, because... Um, the, he was uh, a freedom fighter, the terrorist. O- the other group basically, like, I don't know, meet people, they talk, she fights, doesn't kill but kills a person who just regrows and they laugh for some reason and then they get things, they get go to a city settlement, they go to a hidden bar and they call to meet someone that she knew in the past. Which is Bill Murray. Which is Bill Murray. And Bill Murray <sighs> just betrays them and... Uh, his dynamic's pretty funny. I it's didn't, like, no, I th- I it's basically like it. to Hank, I've been banging your wife, you know, <laughs> she's been doing a lot since he's here and he, and Hank's just kind of like, it was oh, wild. Oh, yeah. How wild? Wild. And he's, he's, he was trying to get, he was trying to tell them, she's like, you didn't tell your family about what you've done in here to the wife he's talking about. Mm. And she basically didn't tell them anything. He's like, well, she lies. She does this. She abandons us, which she did. Yeah, but it would be interesting. The, the first thing you'd think this guy would say is like, you didn't tell him about Kang? <laughs> but, but he, for obvious reasons in the plot, to try and keep the audience uh, in yeah, suspense. Yeah, build out suspension. He, he yeah. artificially avoids the most obvious topic of conversation. Well, he did get to it. Did he mention Kang? He did yeah, mention Kang. Yeah, he did mention him. Oh. He said, you haven't, you haven't told them about him, have you? Oh, yeah, exactly. Well, him. You mean mm. yeah, Kang? Could just... And then she's like, well, what happened to you? And he's like, well, you left us with him, meaning Kang. Mm-hmm. And he conquered them because he's Kang the Conqueror. That, that's, that's it's a bit on the does. nose, that's but you does. get it. That's what he does. Uh, and so they uh, basically escape before they're getting, because Kang's minions come. But then the minions come for um, the other two mm-hmm. who, who are you know, trapped by the freedom fighters. And there's that line, you let them straight to us. It's like, but... They didn't know how to get there. Yeah. You get out of broth. Yeah. So, you, you and they confirm, tied them up. They mm-hmm. confirm this. They use the telepath to confirm that they literally have no idea what's going on. <laughs> yeah. Like They're like, who are you talking about? What's happening? So blaming them is a bit dumb. Very dumb. And uh, then MODOK are, appears, and this is the reveal of MODOK. And it was just... It's a- so funny. Because the shot as well, it's like a, the first shot you see of MODOK is like a full-on straight on shot it's not even like a bit yeah. of an angle or a bit like you get to see him in like 4k per- like, straight on. it seems to be on purpose yeah they, I, I but you could have still i don't know they wanted to make him a joke he wasn't funny um I, I'm, I'm speechless because who watched this in the production thing and thought yeah that's good mm. like and his origin is completely different as well. yeah and so anyway modok arrives there's fighting and, and they get captured but it's really dumb because the whole time when they're getting captured, I'm thinking, you guys can shrink and become effectively invisible. You could like hide so easily, but they just stand there and let themselves get captured. I'm just like. Well, later when they're being captured, they do that. They do. They like shrink and, they, and they're fighting. And, and they keep getting captured and then they shrink and fight and then get escape. And you think, wow, well, Kang maybe might be more smart. And They do do that a lot. They, they? they do that <laughs> so frequently. And then they just get captured because that's the time in the plot that they, they're they supposed to get captured. <laughs> This writing is so bad. Oh, my goodness. Um, uh, what happens next? Uh, well, Hank, Pym, Hope, and Mrs. Hank steal a ship, and then they do the powwow. They start talking about Kang, basically. So she fills him in on the exposition, and then Scott gets captured. Okay, the Hank. exposition is important, though, because we get a flashback, we do get of, a flashback. Uh, the mum and Kang. And again, just some, 
stupid arbitrary thing that they inject. Like they are so creatively bankrupt that they can't figure out creative ways to achieve what they want in the story. So they just inject bull crap stuff to achieve what they want. So what they want in the story is the mum is helping out Kang. Mm. He's just a stranded person that wants to get back and they need her to discover that is really a psychopathic reality shattering, you know, being. And they decide, oh, how can they get her to discover the truth? Um, I don't know. We'll make it that when she touches his ship, she can read his mind. Ooh. The, the ship is controlled by yeah, someone's it's telepathic. mind. Yeah. No, it's linked to his mind. Yeah, yeah. So if you were making a ship that's controlled by your mind, mm. why would you make it that other people can read your mind when you touch it? Uh, to me, that, that, w- that doesn't seem to be go hand in hand with achieving what you want in the ship. Being a conqueror. The only reason why I think it's okay is because it wasn't like touching the outside of ship. She was touching the inside. Not only was she touching the inside, she was touching where the core is, where it's like the power, like the, the magic space time no, power No, I thought she thing. just touched like the ship. No, no, she was touching the magic space time power <laughs> thing. <laughs> it still just struck me as yeah, so forced and dumb. I can I can understand that more than rather than like touching the outside of the ship. I want to double check. Like, it looked like touching just the ship. No, she that, was touching the thing. Yeah, no, she eventually did because she grabbed it, but I th- I'm pretty sure she was just touching the ship. No, no, she had her hand on the big thing. We'll have thing. to double check that. Even then, it's like, wow, you're, you, like... There's okay, still a dumb I, way to design But ship, you know sure. what's really dumb, right? I, even if... I feel it's dumb that you would even design a ship like that, that yeah. people can read your thoughts by touching it when you're you're piloting it. But, if okay, you couldn't avoid it for some arbitrary reason that you built a ship like that, right? You know that you're a psychopathic universe-destroying villain, mm. right? And that when you touch, you're in the ship, that if anyone else touched it, they could discover that. This could, maybe you'd be like, don't touch the ship. It's really dangerous. You know, it's only linked to my power. It could kill you if you touch it. Be careful. Um, or don't touch this thing, right? Right? He would be really cautious, you would assume, in revealing the truth. Because mm. it's when she reads his mind that she stops him. Yeah. She, she takes a thing, runs away, and stops And so he was like, wasn't defensive about it at all. He was like, oh, you're touching my ship. Oh, yeah, you're getting read my... And he's just kidding a casually, like, you've read my thoughts. Oh, yeah, okay. you know? To be fair, he does kick the shit out of her afterwards. <laughs> like, he does. Or only after she's like, tries to resist Yeah, him. yeah. But I'm only okay with that because I, she is touching, like, the core of the ship. Oh, she's just, touching, like, the, the so power bit. so contrived because they just couldn't think of creative ways for her to discover the truth and then resist him. I agree. But I would rather her be touching the core of the magic spaceship than like the outside. <laughs> so that, that, that's From less From memory, agree. I think it's the outside, but if I, I'll have to, we'll have to check, double check. When, I don't know, I'm not even gonna watch this piece of crap. We're again. not gonna check, that's no. not true. <laughs> we don't care. You guys um, can check. <laughs> and so her uh, uh, option of uh, stopping him is by making the core thing grow. She, she, Ex- explode she, it. it makes it expand she puts the the things that make things go big on it and it goes big and so i guess the thing isn't going to fit inside the thing but it's still a power core hmm. and it can still achieve whatever he does hmm. and i mean i guess the guy like he just doesn't have the resources to build a new ship that might be able to use the power that's in this really really but, rich oh, resource oh, wait world. a minute he builds an entire city <laughs> of mechanical Empire. devices he, he makes, like, <laughs> servant guard people. But he just can't, like, it's still a power source. It's still functioning the same way. It's just bigger. Just if make it bigger. <laughs> and if it's bigger, can't he just take part of the... Bi- like, they make a big pizza yes. at the start of the film. And they're like, oh, yeah, I saved eight bucks. <laughs> can't he just, like, take bits of the power source and make a little small one instead? And then again, another thing, like, this guy is such a super genius. He makes a an entire city of... of, of just weapons and resources and things. So what what's preventing him from making another power source? There's like seemingly infinite resources and power sources in this thing. Why can't he make this? They don't explain it. No, and, and even an explanation would have been just, again, arbitrary bullcrap they make to just force the plot to go ahead. And they would have said, oh, there's a rare resource that you need for and they can't find it here or something, which is just, but there's resources for everything else. 
How convenient. How convenient. <laughs> it's basically just like an alien world with a different sky. Like there's resources, technologies built, there's entire empires, uh, everything. S- seemingly more resources because there are power sources and high advanced technology all over the place here. Advanced technology? I don't know if I'd call those like squid, squishy looking know. motorbike things advanced. But you They're see gross. his ships that have like glowing yes, energy yes. balls that are mm. part of their like function. Yeah. And the way you pilot them is like putting your hand in oh, these little goopy so things gross. like a turkey. Like a turkey, everyone. <laughs> Thanksgiving. <laughs> oh, it's just, uh, Something about the guards. Because you basically have hit, uh, Kang's version of st- Stormtroopers type deal. I'm happy that they're all blue. Finally, blue is getting some evil representation. I like that. But it's not clear. For the whole thing, I thought they were like androids. But then right at the end, one of them has like, like, oh, damn it. Oh, I didn't mean to tell you that. So it's like, there's people in there. Oh, I thought they were robots. No, 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 no. I thought they were robots too, right at the end. Are but they when, robots with personality? I doubt it. I doubt it. It was right at the but end. Even, when, but no, you're right, because the way they got the code was that he read their he's mind. Like, and he's like, I'm never going to tell you. Uh, and then he's so like, right. must be oh, a- damn it. They were people. Where did he recruit all these people? I don't know. Did I'm guessing that them? I'm guessing even... they're people he's conquered. Just... But what's interesting is that for the whole film, they're seen as just robots. Yeah, I thought so they were robots. Slaughtering them, getting Kill rid of them, and then right at the end, it's like, oh, they actually might be people in there. Yeah, a lot of them being coerced into this brainwash. You could be slaughtering innocent people here. Oh my goodness, it's so dumb. And so. That's the flashback, but then it goes to uh, Scott and his daughter in the prisons, mm. and Kang appears to tell them that, well, yeah, you're a thief, you can do things. I don't know how he knows that, but you're gonna you're gonna work for me now. You're going to uh, bring the core back. Well, he doesn't say that at all. He just says like, steal something. He's steal like, what something. do I need to steal? And he's like, well, you'll know when you see it. That was the, 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 well, the limited of it information. It became very, very confusing. He threatens the daughter's life. Mm. And I'm like sitting there thinking, it looks like they still have their suits on. suits on and the technology and stuff. Yes. And Scott, you can grow big and just destroy anything. I Like he had enough force to burst out of rubble and throw off yes. hundreds, if not thousands of tons of rubble above him. Yeah. This the cell would not be able to keep you trapped. And it turns out the daughter can do it as well, and she and I, yeah. she suddenly can handle it. Um, and so I'm watching it, thinking like, they've just forgotten that he has powers. Yes, I have no mm-hmm. no rebuttal to that. I have nothing that I can play devil's advocate for. <laughs> like I, I just don't know. <laughs> now the prison cell it nullifies their powers. They didn't explain Disables that. Disables their suits. They could have that's said my that. head cannon, okay? They could have said that. Head cannon is canon in Marvel, okay? We need it. Oh, but that's the sad thing, like because. The writers should not have to rely on the audience to fill in their crap writing and fix the plot holes for them. Um, that is a really important point. Like when I'm when we talk about these things and when we try to make things make sense, that's us using our own yeah. intelligence, intuition, which we shouldn't have to. Exactly, like, it's doing the job of the writers. Yeah, for them. we are doing the job of the writers. Like they, they, we shouldn't have to be mm-hmm. like, well, you know, maybe they did it because of this reason or this. It's like no, no, it just doesn't make sense. It's a it's a massive sign of uh, bad writing. Now, these are just amateurs who are, who are writing this stuff, and it feels like it's Kevin Feige doing a lot of it these days, because it's all produced by him. Uh, he's, a, he's controlling a lot more. Did you see, just a little bit of a sidetrack, did you see at the end it was said like a Kevin Feige production? Mm-hmm. What was that? It's, 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 it's his. It's his. He's, he's running the show yet. Has it always had that at the end? No, um, it's more recently. What was the first film that... Uh, might have been Thor than that? I can't remember. But yeah, it's been... Nerd Roddick pointed out when it first, you know, a Kevin Feige kind yeah. of... It's been very recent that, that he's done caught that. me a bit off. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> so we get an insight into Kang's power. And with all the build-up and the worry and concern that they have about Kang, they've been building up that he is insanely powerful, unstoppable. Like, like you know, the mother, she couldn't ha- like fight against him. And she said when she when he got his suit back, he's basically unstoppable. And then this scene kind of shows that he has such telepathic power that he can control anything. And so I was watching close like, all right, this is all important because this is about power scale. And they're kind of implying that he can just dominate them without even mm. breaking a sweat. Well, which... they also implied that he bodied Thor, which was interesting. Yes. That so, they, he can just take out Avengers easily, yeah. which is really interesting because all of a sudden at the end of the film, oh, he man. starts having a lot of 
trouble and difficulty. We'll get there. We'll get there. Cause, oh. and, and so they're so inconsistent with the power levels where so he's, he's all powerful when they want it for the plot and when it's the appropriate time for him to be defeated, suddenly he can just get bodied by a big person. What's interesting is that he doesn't have the same sort of power as the other Kang variant from Loki. Mm-hmm. Now, the one in Loki could basically just manipulate time all around him. And just predict him. everything. Yeah, and just him. move mm-hmm. around, do everything. With this one, he did. Ha- he had no time abilities. Oh, there are some interesting things uh, that this film answers about Loki. Mm. And uh, the confirmation... I liked Loki. Yeah, I said it. I hated it. Uh, <laughs> the confirmation that the TVA is one of the most insanely evil concepts I think I've come across that has been played off as a good, you know, organization is being confirmed in this where the mother is telling Kang, you are murdering trillions of people when you destroy a timeline. Mm. That's exactly what the TVA was doing. Mm. Whenever they reset a timeline, they just slaughtered an entire reality. And I, I, I pointed that up. I said, if that's the case, this is insane. The T TA- well, I wish that mattered, but it doesn't. <laughs> it does matter. That's a line from Kang. If you're yeah, cute. yeah. <laughs> it's just okay. So Scott, he he decides, uh, okay, he'll he'll help out the Kang now because his daughter's getting threatened. Even though he had the power to do something to resist or anything, he just suddenly can't. And uh, it should be really. I can't. Kang doesn't even need them. It's dumb. He's a super genius. He should know. These guys have the technology to make things big. And make, that's the hallmark of their thing. They got the tech. All you need to do is shrink the thing. But there's this arbitrary bullcrap thing again that to shrink it, you need to dive into the center of it. It was ex- made big by putting attaching it to the outside. Every single like time that this power, the superpower has been shown, you only need to attach it to the outside of something. Okay? I think it's crazy that... Kang is so powerful that he's able to conquer entire universes. He has a telepathic abilities. He has uh, mm. his own personal shields. He has super strength. He has these abilities to mm. shoot beams, stuff like that. But he can't make things big or small. Yeah. Like he's a super genius and he just couldn't figure it out. Yeah. You just need the mysterious pin particles that only one person in the in all of reality has been able to figure out and discover. In the entire multiverse. Yeah, yeah. Because why not just go to another... another... All right, it's, it's, the, the layers have done. And so... All he could have needed to do was like, oh, you've got the stuff, I'll take it off the stuff, throw it on the outside of the thing, shrink it, problem solved. But because the writers are so uncreative, creatively bankrupt they are, is that they can't figure out what they want to achieve in plot, so they're like, oh, we need a challenge, so you have to put it on the inside this time. No, at no time before, when you use the power, did you need to put it... You just put it on the outside, it shrinks. Mm. You can't put it on the outside. You need to dive into the centre, centre point of the power core thingy to make it shrink. Now, because reasons. And uh, Kang, he decides to allow, like, essentially set Scott free to do it um, and just trust that he will return the thing to him, which... We see it nearly doesn't happen. This well, is he doesn't true. have any. He, I guess to steal it off of Scott anyway. I mean, when, it felt like that was easy. It's just like give it to me. This like, is, like, but it's not really a choice. I'm just going to take it. Kane is it so me. powerful. He could have done it himself. Just you, like I'm taking the thing. I'll go in the center of the thing and do the thing. But no, Scott has to do it. And then there's this drawn out sequence of stupid stuff it was where quite long. It was quite long. It went for a while. And again. You're not invested. It doesn't make sense. And so you're just watching random crap happen that you don't give a stuff about. Mm. And the, the sequence is that they duplicate. He starts making potential, like, versions of himself yeah. that are possibilities. And he ends up making thousands of them. It was and- so funny when the Baskin Robbins, Scott Lang showed up and he's like, why am I here? I laughed so hard in the cinema when I saw <laughs> that. Shad heard it and went, oh, wow, Nathan, why are you laughing? And then there's this build up. Uh, the wasp uh, arrives to help him out. He throws the thing on the thing and it gets fried and doesn't work. And so you know what will make it work? Lots of them. Just doing it again, but lots this time. Do it again, but try harder. <sighs> try harder next time. This is, movie is retarded. It's just dumb on every level. And so because they just throw more at it this time, it works. Okay, That's actually how that happens. We're, yeah. not, we're not making anything up. He throws one at it. At it does the, nothing. The There's no reaction. It, it just fries it. fries it, destroys it. So they throw a lot at it, and that works. How? I it, don't know. It overpowers the resistance by just having too much stuff. 
actually it's the quantum realm and it's in a time another day <laughs> oh my goodness so it goes back down right and uh, Kang basically appears like hand me the thing mm. when you you have telepathy you just Steal it. Yep. Guess what? Which is what he does. He just uses. <laughs> I got it. Like so, why'd you ask the first place, you moron? And then they try and resist slash fight. And I'm thinking, like, you've set up everything that there's no way you can beat this guy. Mm. And I'm trying to remember what actually happens in that sequence now, um, because they get left for dead. Yeah. He doesn't even finish Ant-Man the job. And man and wasp just. Yeah, he just kind of swats them away. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Modok comes, uh, goes after Hank, and just destroys the ship. But Hank just still survives because he reasons. Well, yeah, he and reasons then he gets. Mrs. Hank gets taken captive by. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Kang captures and leaves conveniently. Just leaves everybody. He's like, everybody, yeah. but he he did. He's like, this is where you left me for dead. Let's see how they do, and then he leaves. So he did. He did at least say There's a lot. motive behind but it's, that. It's one motive. of those. It's one of those. So stereotypical things where I am going to leave you in an easily escapable situation which will involve an over, overly elaborate and exotic death. Yes. It's exactly the Dr. Evil thing where it's like, I'll leave you to die it and won't. I won't finish the job. Wait, yeah, wait, no, at your mercy, you could have killed him, re- re- resolved any potential threat of your demise and defeat, but I will leave you alive because of cliche villain tropes. <laughs> Sorry, I love that line in Austin Powers. I'm going to put them in an easily escapable situation involving an over elaborate and exotic death. <laughs> That's what happens. <laughs> and so then, um, is this where the ants are mentioned? Like, like he discovers yeah, the, the ants? Yeah, the ants save Hank. Those, those ones right from the start in the ant farm that were this just is... made their own technology. All right, all right, like... When it comes to arbitrary bullcrap oh, yeah, for bad. the sake of it's the bad. plot, this one takes the cake. Where the ants, when they fell into the quantum the other guys, didn't, they didn't fall into this, but the ants, when they fell into the quantum realm, they fell into an area of time dilation and they have lived for thousands of years and developed a class two advanced super <laughs> civilization. We're not kidding. <laughs> This Quoted is, from the movie. This is in the film, right? And I think you're like, what? Like, I, so convenient the ants fell into that, man. S- s- r- screw that if one of the other people fell into that, this is even a possibility. That you're wondering, gee, where, where's Scott? And you find he's like a skeleton of dust because he's aged to death because he was stuck in a, a time dilation thing. And then, and then... How does that even work? Did they go back in time in the quantum realm? Or did they land at the current time and just pass thousands of years? Because they landed back in time to pass thing, why didn't Kang discover them? And if it was just they landed there and thousands of years passed, where the hell is this pocket place in the quantum realm that has time dilation? And why isn't time dilation a really problem that you can accidentally step into a new field of time and you start aging at a completely different rate? Hmm. <sighs> How are they smart ants? They're just regular ants. <laughs> no, they're, su- they're genius ants. And because <laughs> thousands of years... <laughs> they're a little puny. Like class two super civilization. So, now. <laughs> so, also, why are they different sizes? Like, they, they should be little small ants because mm-hmm. they transported down with them. But now they're big ants. Now they're big ants. For convenience sake. Exactly. And this is what I mean about the day ant ex machina, right? Mm-hmm. The heroes did nothing to cause that to happen. It just right. happens, and now the ants are, they built a super civilization. They have, like, cities and technology everywhere and everything, and the ants are the ones that defeat Kang. Oh, you spoiled the ending. They don't, we're in spoilers. It's relevant because right, this is where it's all connected. That This is, and they just come out, I, I, the heroes, they could have just sat on their asses, and the, it's okay, the ants have developed the super civilization, and they've just defeated everything. And they tried to play it off like they come in at an epic moment, but it's like, no, no, that was just, you know, manipulative thing where, ah, now they're like, you could have come in at any time. You could have waited for the ants to be ready and just send the ants in. It's like, that, like, like the amount, and, and then, ah, oh, I freaking hate it! Because the ants, when they actually attack, they use very little technology. Yeah. They end up just biting things. I got nothing. I got nothing. It's just... <laughs> I need to defeat 
Kang just wants to swarm him. And for some reason, they can get through his shield. And Oh, but no, he, he's fighting him off. Modok then just... Anyway, we'll get to... We'll, we'll do, so, there. The, the ants are there, basically. And um, they save Hank. And they save Hank. Oh, my goodness. Uh, and so, the daughter, is, she gets captured. She's still captured. She's still captured. That's right. She That's right. Uh, and when we talk about easily escapable, she now can... She escapes. Escapes. Yep. Because... because she can. Does she can actually shrink. How well, no, did she escape? She, she made one of them really big, one yeah. of the guards, oh, and she made right. one really they small. They took her out of the cell. Well, she was already out of the cell. She, she watched her dad like she jump, jump off. off yeah. And then once he jumped off, she went back. Yeah. They, were, they were escorting oh, her right. back. To get the, okay, the okay. power cell. Yeah. Okay. And then, yeah, and then she easily, you know, takes Breaks them out. out and, yeah. and then she finds one of the rebel people and breaks her out by yep. smashing one of the... Uh, I thought it was robot heads into, uh, just smashing the head into the the, the, the panel, which, works, opens, which opens also the which also doesn't work because then we later see that that rebel lady puts in a code. She puts it and she just knows the code. Yeah. So why does smashing that guy? And how head does in? she know the code? We don't know. It doesn't make sense. And the daughter before's like, is there a key? Is there a code? Is there something? And the rebel lady's like, what's a key? What's a? I'm so confused. What is this thing you're talking about? We don't have this in the quantum realm. And anyway, she frees the rebel lady, and she is so awesome. And like, we need to know that she's so awesome that the daughter will. She will say, "You are so awesome." And all, I'm like, she did nothing. Or she, or she defeated yeah. some guards. She wouldn't have gotten out without you. So, yeah. like, I don't think she's that awesome. And then there, ah, oh, there's there's layers of dumb here. So Kang, he decides to broadcast a thing saying our time is upon us because now he has the, th the thing to do the thing and is going to, he he's built up an entire like empire here, a a an endless army, uncontested, and is going to use this to invade. Not uncontested, he conquered everything. Oh yeah, he did conquer, but now he's uncontested and, uh, and not contested by the outside. I am happy that he took, he wants to take the army with him. Yeah. Because yeah, it would have made me more angry if he's mm. like, okay, now I've got everything. I'm just going to go and but, leave my army here. It's like, no, no, take him with you. I'm what, happy that he does that. Tries to. My point here is that the quantum realm seems basically infinite in its size. Mm. You could go anywhere in it where there's, like the ants did it. The ants just found a place. They didn't have to conquer anyone to build a class two civilization. Mm. And so you could just go anywhere and you have infinite resources. And if you're smart enough, you can just build an empire. And I was like, holy crap. If people just can get access to the quantum realm, they can zip down, build an army, bring it back with them. I, I... So there's something I want to talk about. Okay. I've been think I've been mulling it over. I'm still trying to process everything. So, it's implied that Kang is exiled to this under universe because there's no time there. It's implied that. Yeah, they said it's separate. Yeah, because because it seems like the bulk of his power of all the Kang's power is their time ability. They, I, I don't I don't know what it is, but they're super powerful because reasons. But it seems like the core of it is their time travel. They. They originally discovered multi dimensional it. Travel, time travel. Time yeah. travel. And it's implied that they exiled him there so that he can't use that power. And he, so he's basically stuck there. But we find out who exiled him. Yeah, we do. We do. Mm. But what issue what the issue I have with it is though, if time is his main power and that's where his real strength is at, how did the ants get time dilation going through? It's a good question. Because I can understand if he wants to leave because he can't use his time abilities. So he wants to go back to the proper universe and mm -hmm. be all-powerful again. I get that. But how did the ants get well, time dilation? Because dilation? there is time in this universe. Exactly. Yeah. That's my point. Mm -hmm. So why can't he be all-powerful in this little universe? Well, I don't know. Great question for Kevin. If you can just email us, um, that'd be great. <laughs> also, we, we skipped over something. This is where Marvel, they, Disney Marvel, they can't resist themselves. And so when uh, uh, Hank is describing the ants, he says, they've worked together collectively. And, you know, I know socialism is a loaded word, but we could really learn something from... <laughs> and then he gets cut off and they keep going. And it was like such an unnecessary line where it's just... Whoever's making this, whoever wrote this, had to just indulge themselves to just slip in their little bits of, you know, propaganda, uh, because that's that's what media is for. You gotta you gotta have to spread the message, right? 
And it just, it's just like, come off it. And I'm not saying you can't have characters that are socialists in film, but it was, it's overtly there to push a message. And it's always one way. You know, like Hollywood and, and, and Disney, they, what, they love the socialism, they love the communism, they want to push towards that. And capitalism and uh, all the other things, that's evil. I just love how he says, you know, it's a lot of term where he's talking to like the people who would clearly be like on board for it. <laughs> Doesn't make sense because you would, everyone agrees with you, Hank. I'm sorry, you just. In the... Well, I would have loved like <laughs> if uh, Paul Rudd was like, "No, socialism sucks. Capitalism is." Like, yeah. And then I'll be, I'll be okay. It's like get a balance, do both. But no, it, that's the that's the thing that Disney they can't help themselves. Normally, I would jump in and be like, "Oh no, I think it's," blah, blah, blah. but that's just what happens. Yeah. He basically walks up to Scott and Hope and says, "So the ants have built this type two civilization. Hey." I know socialism is a loaded word, but we could probably... Like, yeah. That is actually what happens uh, in the film. And it's implying only through socialism yeah. and, uh, you know, it's bigger brother communism, could we build the utopia? It's it's exactly their messaging and... Bigger uh, brother, I would say. <laughs> when it takes its mask off. Yeah. <laughs> and, oh, my goodness. The, the other reason why they do this, right, is this is a film that's actually made to be seen by children. Okay, and if they can Im implant is a, it? a positive perception on the word socialism and a negative perception on the word capitalism, and they do it, by the way, like they, in, in mainstream, you know, entertainment media, they rag on capitalism all the time. Doctor Who, with the Peter Capaldi era, is this whole episode where it's like, capitalism, like this evil bad thing happening and is blaming capitalism constantly in the mm. episode. And again, this is to, like, manipulate impressionable people to perceive something as positive and something else as negative and and they don't like forget any actual honest discussion about these philosophies because there is actually interesting things i actually do agree with certain social welfare policies all right i'm not one or the other i'm mm. i'm more so a capitalist right but there's these are actually complex things but they want to jump and, and get rid of all that and they want to imply utopia you know class two civilization Socialism. That's how we'll achieve it. And they and they want to get, you know, again, it's, children will be watching this. That's why they put it in. See, when you say that show, then I'm worried about other things too, like with the whole Hank and his wife talking about what they did when they weren't together. Hank being like, look, I, I tried, but, you know, she wasn't you. I and mean, she's like, I have needs, Hank. I have needs. And I was like, all right, I can see this relationship as one side. <laughs> yeah. And also, I've noticed there was a lot more SHITs in this one. Yeah. I was thinking back. Well, I... I, I know, you, you have no filter, so uh, you don't see it. I, but. I, well, no, no, what did you... What, what was that word? I just... I, I could. What did S S S H I T. I can't spell. Oh, okay. Oh, what was okay. it, Nathan? Oh, it's okay. Fine. But they said it a lot in this yeah. film. And, and the D word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I remember back in the day when. Captain and America Nathan said the D word as well. But look, you sometimes it's there. I I I, I drop the B <laughs> word now and then when I'm getting you know. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, all, all I was trying to say is I miss the days back when Captain America were like, language, and yes. then Tony Stark's like, did the Captain just, did, what? But now everyone's just doing whatever, and I feel just, yeah. You have that, and the socialism talks, and the marriage, open marriage, basically, and all this other stuff. I'm just like, I don't want my kids to watch this. <laughs> okay, to be clear, I don't care about swearing. So, um, what, what? yeah, that just beads really? up a lot. Really? No, 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 no I don't care. I'm shocked. Yeah, I'm sure, we, I'm sure we could find some episodes of just just pure censor. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so we need a comment on that. It, it's just there. They can't help themselves. It's Disney, you know, Star Wars. Ah, uh, and, uh, yeah. So now the daughter gets free. Kang has been broadcasting a message to his troops to get them ready to invade. And then somehow, because reasons, the um, the rebel lady can hack the broadcast away from Kang to broadcast something else that goes across, is it the whole quantum realm? Or at least the... Apparently all the with, and, civilizations. And she specifically says, now is the time to attack. And I'm like, what? What's changed? What greater kind of... Um, thing do you have? You don't say, hey, we've got an army of super advanced ants. On it. And she doesn't even know that. Yeah, they don't know that yet. And so she is like, if you attack now, we'll win. And I'm like, 
No, not according to your knowledge. Why do you think that? They've been fighting for years, getting nowhere. Kang just came in and just destroyed their like, home base without breaking a sweat. But now if you attack, you'll win. I think it's the activism mentality. <laughs> it's the, if we try it this time, we'll win. Believe in it hard enough and you'll win. We've never actually tried real communism, guys. <laughs> <laughs> now is the time. And they, they like... They attack and they're doing. They are vastly more effective than they should be in in this battle. Like, like that blob thing shows up. He gets shot, and, and there's a joke of him being like, "Hold!" and then he starts eating people. And as soon as they start to attack Kang City, I'm watching, thinking, "Okay, well, Kang, wipe him out. You're super powerful. You're like the big thing. You don't even need the army. Why are you letting your troops get wiped out? Your city get destroyed?" And he just. He does nothing. And not only that, then Scott comes in and he does the thing that I thought he could have done any time. He just gets super big and starts trouncing everyone. And Kang's starting to feel worried. And I'm like, I'm watching this thinking like, I thought, I thought that's not going to be much of a threat, Kang. Yeah. He's, all he did is get big. And to me, he didn't get any extra big than he's been able to get before. This yeah. isn't like a unique different power up, but he's just so insanely effective in wiping everything out, there he's getting pummeled at a shot and it only starts to hurt him at one point. But then the wasp comes in and she says, I'll cover for you. And she starts taking out the ships, like one thing at a time, blowing them apart. And was she doing that when she had shrunk? Like, where did she get that firepower? Unclear. I don't, I don't know. She's just blowing him to bits. And they don't explain that they got this power up from the super advanced dance. They're just blowing things apart. Suddenly, turns have tabled. How the turn turns tables. turns have tabled, and uh, it's it's. I'm just because nothing's making sense. It does not justify what they're doing, and it's just stupid flashy lights. I'm sitting there watching, feeling nothing, thinking, this is really dumb. They're, because if you want to get invested in a fight scene, power scale is important. Mm. Seeing someone be challenged and have to overcome obstacles that make log logical sense, and then if they can think of creative, unique ways to overcome the barriers in the fight and then succeed and win, you're like, yes, I like it. But there's none of that. It's just now they're strong because reasons and they're doing this because that. And throughout all this, I'm thinking, Kang, what are you doing? And then I, 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 as I'm watching this, I, I if Kane comes out and just takes out Scott, because right, I'll, I'll, I'll go back a bit. Scott starts to do something that Kane gets worried about. He's like, stop them. Kane puts up this big shield to protect the center part of his city that is going to teleport out of the quantum realm. Mm. And so Scott is going to prevent that. Stop it. Break his army being able to leave. Kane does not want that. Kane literally says, stop him. Don't let him do it. Right. And then I'm watching this thinking, Kane. Holy crap. If after this fight, if you come out and take out Scott in his giant form and confirm that you could have stopped him at any other time, you're the biggest friggin' retard in this show. The movie is so friggin' dumb. It's exactly what happens. So Kang does nothing and he complains like, stop him. Scott in his giant form breaks apart the city. And after they break apart and stop Kang from achieving what he wants, now Kang decides to go out and fight them. While this is all happening, Hope is fighting Modok as well. Yeah. But I do like what Scott says. What he's saying when he's in his big form. You you didn't keep your words. Now I'm going to break your stuff. I like that. I didn't like that. Really? Because that was kind of Scott confirming that I would be uh, I would have given you the orb and doomed realities to death. But uh, I, I think there are other things that, you know, how about don't you dare friggin' lay a hand on my daughter, kind of thing. It's like, but he's complaining about, you broke your word, Kang! And I'm thinking, is that what you're worried about? And he's like, you know, he's like, where's my daughter? He like, doesn't know that she's out. He doesn't know that she's free. He's like, where is she? I want her. But then Scott says, like, our word is our bond. But it looked like Scott was going to break it and not hand over the thing. Well, only because he didn't know where his daughter was. Yeah. She wasn't with him when he took it, remember? I, I think as much as those morals would be nice to see in a movie, I think Marvel is not the place to, <laughs> oh, to yeah. show that anymore. Because <laughs> you can question Scott Lang because he was a criminal for how many years beforehand. There's just so many. Yeah. Mm. Well, doesn't work. Kang comes out and he and with all this strength and all the worry of, uh, of Scott destroying his thing, Kang decks Scott in his giant form with a single punch and makes him shrink. He could have done that at any time. 
And I'm just watching like... He only did this after it destroyed after the, it the destroyed rings the, and the shield. He, he, his entire kind of city was about to teleport. Yeah. And then he shows that he could have stopped Scott at any moment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. And so then they start really struggling. And Kang, he starts offloading his power. He's blowing people to hell. Yeah. He puts shields up. He's knocking people back. He's using his telepathy. But then... Scott suddenly grows big again and starts to punch him and pummel him a bit. And I'm like thinking, well, hang on, how tough is Kang? He's really starting to struggle. Kang, you decked him with one hit before, and now Scott is kicking, taking it a task. So Kang's powers seem to all be just his suit, mm. like an Iron Man type deal. Once yeah. he doesn't have the suit, he's just a normal dude. Mm -hmm. uh, so the suit is the source of his power. And he doesn't have his time powers either. Mm -hmm. So he's, once he doesn't, once his suit, is damaged or broken? He's just a normal dude. He's got some good. He can, he, he can throw hands. Yeah, he can throw. He can he can throw a punch. We see later on. I'm trying to remember what happens in the course of the battle to then cause the ants come in because King starts to get the upper hand. Yeah, he's yeah. starting to win. Mm -hmm. And so, and then he's got the shield, and they can't overcome the shield. And now the ants arrive because that's when the story wants the ants to arrive. They could have. They could have waited for the ants, gone together, saved people's lives by collectively doing it, or, you know, in here. What annoys me about the ants is when they start to, they start to swarm him over his shield, we've seen him use, like, that discharge power where he just, like, gets angry and everything around him gets vaporized. Mm -hmm. We've seen him use this power. This is the perfect time to use this power. Exactly. Why didn't he use this power? I, I because, have questions. Because this was the right time in the story for King to be defeated. So suddenly yeah. he just doesn't have the power. Yeah. yeah. That, that, that's, that's the level of quality writing in this movie. And also, the ants arrive, and some ants like have like lasers, and they're shooting, and there's like tech that they have. But when they attack King, it looks like they're just biting the shield. Yeah. And they're, they're like almost pushing apart the shield, because they can now. But he is holding him back, and then... Um, Modok had previously been basically defeated by the daughter. Yeah. She she grows big. She grows big and beats him. <clears throat> and look, they kind of imply that growing big is difficult. Um, and Scott seems to be the only person who can kind of manage it. Yeah. And he did. And they say in other films that I was only able to maintain this for so long. Um, but then she can just magically do it. Never tried it before. Right. Just because reasons. Uh, it's in the genes. I don't know. That's fair. Okay. And so she grows big. She kicked the crap out of Modoc, And her line is like, you're such well, no, a, a penis head. Well, it's more, to, more he goes like, I don't know what I am. What should I be? Just tell me what not to be. Like, tell me what to be and I'll do it. Basically, that's and where, where did that come from? He, he at no point showed any conflict about his identity. Yeah. He was like, I am Modoc. I am the blah, 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 blah. I am this and I'm happy I'm this. But now he's not. And she just tells him, you know. Stop being a doo-doo head, doo-doo, penis. And then so he does. And he's like, I, I, what was his reply? I can't or something like that? Yeah, it's too late for me. It's, like, look at me. And, it, and then she's like, and she delivers it like as this epic line. She's like, it's never too late to stop being a... And I'm just thinking, Marvel writing. And that was enough. That made him rethink his entire, you know, life in this quantum realm to turn on Kang. Even though he probably had so much built up range and anger towards her and Scott for shrinking him into the form that he is. Yeah. He's like, you know, she's right. He will, he will forgive them all. And yeah. like all, all the bad things that, you know, he blames Scott and um, thing for. And, the, and he turns on uh, Kang and he's the one that bursts through the shield and blows up Kang. Uh, Supposedly, you think he's defeated. He's not defeated, but destroy the suit effectively. Yeah. Oh, no, it doesn't. I don't think mm. that does. Yeah. And, like, I'm still confused why Kang made MODOK as a weapon. He could have just, like, made weapons and ships and, uh, and like, it's just they force it in. You could have cut MODOK and you wouldn't, yep. the film wouldn't be... He is a throwaway character. Yeah. Yep. And he dies. He dies. He dies. Yep. Yes. In, a, in a joke. They make a joke. Yeah. Uh, like... Like, so I'm an Avenger now. We're brothers. And he's like, mm -hmm. yeah. And then there's like, you know, that stupid awkward, little, like he touches little the baby little, hand. Little baby hand. Yeah. And the face. And so it's like, and like, just. Yeah. And, and it's, it's literally like he dies. And then it's like, anyways. <laughs> yeah, like, no one cares. Yeah. yeah. It's a joke. And it's not funny, though. Yeah. And so 
the mother suddenly is like, I think I can get enough energy out of the broken, because when Scott like destroyed the sphery thing, you saw the power source get broken. Mm. But guess what? It's now not broken. Now there's just enough energy to let the heroes return to their world because that's what the plot needs. <laughs> it's just not broken. It's the, it's the stupid shit. I think that was more it just like got knocked out, like off. Like it looked like, like it unplugging it, it. Yeah, basically. but it fully powered down like it was broken, like how we saw it before when they had to repair it. Yeah, that is true. Mm. That is true. And so now it's again, working enough. Again, me and my my head cannon trying to fill <laughs> yeah, it. Yes. Yeah, like, <laughs> what else am I supposed to do? I'm trying to I make know. it make sense. Yeah, but it's you're doing too much um, for the writers. Yeah, but the problem is, it. if it doesn't make sense in my head, I get really angry. I know, yeah. I'm like, what, man? Yes, like, yeah, and you you think you want to? And honestly, I do do this for films that earn it. Sometimes that actually good, mm. and I'm like, all right, if you're good, I'm willing to perhaps look for is there something in the uh, story that might justify an unexplained element? And sometimes there's easily enough, and you don't have to go to too many leaps, and that's good. Um, and it, but here I'm just thinking, okay, now it's not not broken. It's yeah. it's just there enough. They open a portal that's going to take him back, and I'm just watching. It's like, oh, they're going to do the trope where it takes him way too long than it should to get through the portal, and mm -hmm. the last person through, something's going to happen to stop him. Exactly what happens. They all go through way too long. If, if this is like you don't, it's it's a time thing. You don't know how long the portal is. Everyone should be jumping through at the same time without it. But those like you first. I'm thinking now you and everything. And then Scott's gonna like, and then Kang comes in and um, his suit's all busted, so he doesn't have any power anymore. Mm -hmm. Well, he has one blast. I think he had one blast left. To and like... he blasted. He didn't close it. I forget what happened. He blasted what? something for sure. Uh, he because Scott pushes his daughter in, pushes mm. Hope through, and he blasts something. But that's like his last blast. He's yeah. like his his arm is breaking off basically, and then he just he beats the crap out of Scott. It, it, and it's like the only I, I wasn't engaged, but I was more engaged. I was like, this is at least a bit more because Scott was actually getting challenged, mm. and it, things were happening that you kind of understand. You know, you have an intuitive understanding of how fist fight works. This is why it's important to establish how powers work and then be true to them, so you can be invested because then you understand what's going on. You can see someone struggling and justified, and it's justified in what's actually happening for them to struggle. And so this, you actually understand. It's a fist fight. Scott was never the best fist fighter. Okay, I don't know why he's not using his shrinking and growing anymore. Like, he can. Pump someone really hard, but and suddenly, actually, that well, undermines the entire fight scene for me. Why didn't he use his powers? His helmet smashed. Oh, his, uh, that's right. He got shot in the helmet. Uh, did he? I thought. Yeah, Kang, I, think... I thought Kang stomped his helmet, and that's what broke. Oh, him. you're right. He. Uh, sorry, I don't know then. Because I can't remember what he shot. I know he shot something. But I thought he can use it without his helmet. It's like the, it's the suit that does it. Yeah. So why isn't he using his powers? I don't know. I it's wasn't the one who said that. This movie is retarded. <laughs> but anyway. They forget Scott has powers, and he gets beaten up, and uh, <laughs> I'm watching this thinking, this is pointless. There's there's no threat here, because if he closes the portal, your family is now in the real world, and they can open up portals to the quantum realm whenever they want. They can send people to the quantum realm at will and grab you. They're, you're safe. You can just close it. And so that line where it says, I don't have to stop you. I just have to make sure we both lose. I'm thinking, that's not true. You know, no, that's not true. Also, I'm going to say, they're being set, like the portal's open and the whole family's like, hmm, where's Scott? Yeah. I wonder where he is. <laughs> and then at the Finally. convenient time, Wasp shows up. But like, the other three just standing there going, well, I hope he defeats Kang. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they, they don't know what's going on. So yeah, but someone finally does go back and then she helps them defeat Kang by knocking him into the power source and the power source kind of consumes him and it's not really clear what happens there yeah like it's the same type of death that happened to Yellow Jack and so he could have just been teleported yeah, to, just, a, yeah. to, to another world to another oh, universe another in the, universe in Quantumania so, 2 it's, it's, it's so dumb and so he, he's probably not dead but they have an infinite amount of Kangs to just pull from anyway so it doesn't matter and then you're like oh does the film actually want us to think, oh, they're trapped? Because you know they're not. Like, yeah. 
It happens exactly what you know what's going to happen. The family on the outside just uses their device, opens a portal, and they walk through. But do remember the device that they're using to make those portals is a beacon satellite, not mm. actually a portal generator. But they made a portal. That's how he fell into the quantum realm and survived the blip. Yeah, no, it doesn't yeah. make sense. Yeah, because it's not a portal thing. It's well, a, now it is. Yeah. Now it is. You're uh, you're absolutely right. It wasn't a portal, but now it suddenly can. Now be it a just portal. makes portals. Now it makes portals, and they make a portal out of it. And they come back, and. Uh, there, look, that's the film. There's uh, some closing also, off Also, how scenes. does that even work? Because it's not even a portal. Like, you shrink down and you get bigger and come back out. Why is it a portal that magically just throws you back out? Because that's what they wanted to happen in the plot. Uh, that's it. That's, uh, that's the movie. They just... Random crap happens with no justification or build-up, truly, where, like, the ants, they fall into, uh, the, you know, time dilation because that's what the plot needs. And then the, it happens now. Dumb. So dumb. Like, this is classic Marvel writing at this point, where they're just writing dog crap. And that's most of the film. There's some closing off things where there's another scene similar to the beginning where Scott's like, my life is great. It's great. But then he's like, oh, all these terrible things that King mentioned. It'll be fine. And like, warn the Avengers. You, you, you guys are the ones who have power, like technology to actually explore multiversal stuff mm. and time travel stuff. That's a problem for another day. It's, it's fine. Like, fine. I know this movie was atrocious, but that point, I was like, this is when, if I was a normie watching this, I would think this is awful. Because <laughs> hey, we're back at the start, everything's all good. Oh, no. Terrible evil's going to... I'm fine. Like, it felt so... I felt so uneasy watching yeah. it. I was like, this is not a good person. He yeah. knows bad stuff's coming, and he's like... <laughs> I'll forget about it. Exactly. Don't alert the Avengers. It's not like you yeah, have their number or anything. Don't alert organizations i don't know if shield is back or not doesn't seem like it but uh, i don't know stark tech or i don't know people Do wakanda something. tell wakanda they're the saviors of this world at the moment get wakanda onto the case but uh no it's, it's like screw it up. you know this uh, entity that can destroy realities it's fine <laughs> it's dumb it's so dumb and he, he just gets a cake for his daughter and they all sing happy birthday and then we get after credit scenes where it turns out the people that banished King were other kings, and they don't actually explain why. It seems like they wanted to say they wanted to conquer or destroy or something. I don't know. That, that's, they, it was, it, that's, that's in Loki as well. I don't, I it was know. timeline stuff, I think. So I don't know who cited it. Someone wanted to like have one timeline, and then they all want their own timelines. So I yeah. think the king that banished was trying to stop them all from having these. No, but that timelines. was the king in Loki. But, but yeah. I think this, yeah, I, from what I from what I remember and what I think the story says which could be wrong is that the king in loki was the one who basically won who mm -hmm. yes, who yes. was deciding there was only one timeline mm -hmm. but then when he was killed the multiverse split then all these other kangs now could do whatever they want and they well not they the the original king from loki was the one who banished the bad king to but that, the quantum universe but he's dead he's dead well yeah he he didn't do it 5 minutes ago he did it a long time ago okay they have time travel okay again but his but his plot line was built on the fact. Uh, so, <laughs> so there's that, and yeah, that's the end of the film. Kings are there, and then they have another thing where, hey, you remember Loki, right? I remember Loki was one of the first TV shows we reviewed here I think on, it was. on Night Squad. Was it the first one? It might have been the first one. It set the tone for the channel. <laughs> yeah, it really it did. did. <laughs> what a dumpster fire that show was. <laughs> And so, I'm excited for Loki season two. It seems like it's just going to be Tom Hiddleston and um, something Wilson just being bros. Oh, Wilson, yeah. yeah. I like going Wilson, but I'm sorry you're in a Marvel TV show. If like, I yeah. feel bad for you. So there, there was a jangling key for Loki yeah. season two. Why wow, he's not that bad of a guy? You're telling me he's really evil. He is evil. Because they they found another king, but this yeah. is like king in the early days, like okay. 1800s king. <clears throat> And that and that's it. That's 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 Ant Man's and the Wasps's uh, quantum mania. Yeah. <sighs> Par for the course for Disney Marvel. That was a messy movie, and if mm. that is the start of Phase Five, holy <laughs> crap! <laughs> what is a Kang movie TV show going to be like? Secret Wars, like I'm... all this other stuff in the pipeline. I'm like, I can't even stay awake and 
Ant-Man and Wasp or like even get invested in characters because they mm. have these celebrity appearances and then they die off after a scene. Like Modok, I was kind of excited to see him be like evil, mm. scary Modok, but no, he's dead now. <laughs> and it was a joke the whole time. Like what other oh, what beloved characters are going to ruin for us? I said this when we were lining up to go into uh, this film that I don't care. I wouldn't even, if I, we weren't reviewing it, I wouldn't watch watched it. Yeah. And, and this is just convinced me that that is the correct choice. I, I, the Marvel Cinematic Universe is dead. Will they, uh, like, I don't know. I, they I don't had know to retcon they, it all, I think, to ever bring anything back. Yeah, they, they've ruined too much now. Uh, and I think they're starting to realise it. Like, the enthusiasm is just dying and it's movies and shows like this that just keep doing it and so like, Disney keep doing what you're doing you're destroying your own stuff you deserve it at this point you're not learning from your mistakes and so this is where we're at the state of Disney Marvel I got nothing to say don't look at me <laughs> thank you for watching guys we'll see you next time and as always stay on watch